All right, so uh, my name is Julie Turner. I am with Simpraxis Consulting, and today I am going to give you a overview and some demo on the H2O React Component Library. And so this library is a collaboration between myself and Stefan Bauer of NAD Design. And so uh, let me just quickly give you a little uh, visualization of who I am, but we're going to move really quickly because that's not very important. All right, so what is H2O? H2O is an open source alternative to Microsoft's Fluent UI web design system. Um, at its core, so there's an, a, a piece of this called H2O Core, which is a style guide based on HTML and CSS to create the implementations for then any framework, unlike um, the Fluent UI uh, web system that is available, that's only React controls. This is an HTML and CSS based library so that you can use that uh, design language in any framework. In addition to that, we have built a React library of those controls, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So how do we get started? We get started by creating your SharePoint framework solution uh, using React.js. You can also build an external React.js application and use this, these uh, components in that as well. You would then install H2O React, and you do that by just an MPMI install of the H2O React library. You set up theme support, you initialize icons, you then create your class or function component, and then you import the H2O React component that you need. One of the main features of the React component library is we try to build extensibility in at the core. So every component has a sort of template or style to it that that extensibility right at its core. And so if you uh, look at the little image I have here on the screen, uh, the item marked with a red two, the interface, the props interface for every single component in our library can contains an element, at least one, called root element attributes. And what that is, is it's an HTML, it's a typed HTML attributes list for whatever the root element is of the component. Now, by default, that's HTML element, so it's a, 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 um, a generic element, but for each one, when we implement them, we change out HTML element to whatever that root element is uh, in the render method. So if you were to see on line 35, this is a the root element of this component is a div element. So we would change that um, root element attributes to the attributes for an HTML div element. And what that gives you is a way to do any, add any attribute that is an HTML attribute of a div element to this control. So if you need to add drag and drop events, if you need to add custom styling, if you want to add extra classes, any attribute of an HTML div element, you can add by simply adding them into the properties of the component. As well, all of our components do logging to the console, and we do so by, um, if you look at line 20 there, by having a customized um, logging source that has an icon in it. And what that helps you do is be able to see where anywhere in your console that you have that little water symbol in the beginning of the name of the control, you can quickly find any issues that are arising because of these components. Okay, so that's the overview. And now let me just dive right into the demo. So let me get out of, of the slides and we're going to come back over here. And so what we have is the landing page. I just wanted to show it the landing page for the uh, H2O site. So as I mentioned, we have H2O core, we have H2O react. So core is the HTML and CSS straight up. You can use that. And there is a, um, there is documentation on how to get started with core so that will help you then we have the documentation and all the information for h2o react we're going to dive into that we also have another library called h2o icons these are all 3200 office fluent ui um, icons uh converted to svg icons so i'm going to show you a little bit more about that as well all right, so let me get out of the lead documentation. This is the landing page for the H2O React components. And so right off, we start with a getting started page, and this walks you through step by step. So essentially, you're going to install H2O React. The 
library has a dependency on H2O Core and that gets installed for you as a dependency. So you don't have to worry about that part of it. The next step we're gonna do is we're gonna import the core styles. So all those styles that HTML and CSS live in that core library and we need to add an import to get those styles into our uh, solution. So the way we do that is we go into our root uh, web uh, web, uh, web part SCSS file, and we add a global uh, decorator to our import. And I'm going to show you this live. Uh, and then we have to, you know, add an in import into our root React element to put the class name as the styles dot my root web part. So that's this class name that's in our SCSS file. We need to import that into the root div of our entire React project. And the reason that we do that is because that adds the CSS variables to that root component so that all the variables that are needed for the theming support and everything else are there for the components so that they style properly. And then last but not least, a new newly implemented in the SharePoint framework 1.16 is a feature in the config file in the config directory folder. There's a sas.json file and we need to include this is quiet depths equal true. And it's a long story on why that's necessary, but essentially it's to uh, quiet warnings about the version of SAS that we're using. So we will go through that in, um, we, so we won't go into that in any more detail. Um, the last thing that we have to do to get working is in, initialize the base SVG icons that are used by the library itself. So for like the drop down control and uh, other things like that, where we have uh, some icons built in, those are built into the library and we need to initialize those. So we're going to add uh, a import for a for a class called that has a default global called SimSet. We um, that's short for symbol set class and we await symbol set dot init symbols, which sets up the uh, icons that are by default needed for all the controls. And we'll go, I'm going to go into a little bit more about that uh, shortly. And so let me just say that if you want to create a set of icons that you can then use for uh, in your control controls, like you want some buttons or you have other places where you inputs or any other thing where you want to have some iconography, uh, you can also use this new tool that Stefan built called the icon tool. And so this is a listing. It's very similar to Chris Kent's Flycon. Uh, it's a listing of all the icons that are available. And what you basically can do is go through and pick the icons that um, are ones that you want to include in your project. And once you've picked all the ones that you want, you can click this download button and it gives you an SVG uh, symbol set file that you can then add to the assets of your project and then import that into your solution. And so how you would do that is you'd get that symbol set file added into like your assets or somewhere else. And then you import that symbol set file after you add at the root source an image.d.ts, it could actually be anything. It doesn't have to be images, but something.d.ts file. And in that file, we're going to declare SVG's files as um, a content type so that the import will know what it is. So I'm going to say import symbol set file from that SVG. And then instead of not passing anything when I init symbols, I'm going to pass in the name of that symbol set file. And so that would then add those icons and then I can reference them when I'm using um, icons in my work. Other than that, we can also just include the H2O icons library and then pick out the entire SVG, all 3,200 icons and pass those in and initialize those. So that's another way to do it. Another thing we do is support um, theming. So if you're in SharePoint framework, I have created a class called the SPFX themes class. And it takes all of that boilerplate code that you need for theming support and consolidates it so that you only really need a couple lines of code to add theming support. And it really does clean up your base class. So we, we need to, to use that, we need to import themes provider. That's an SP component object. We also need to import that SPFX themes class in the interface. So then we create a private variable for the the theme and create an instance of it. 
And then we want to know whether or not we have Microsoft Teams so we can, because this library does support the theme of Microsoft Teams. So if you're building SharePoint framework solutions where you're surfacing them not only in SharePoint, but also in Microsoft Teams, we can set this up so that we get the, the uh, theming to match the Teams user interface. Then we need to create an instance of our theme provider, and then we call the uh, class SPFX themes with the init theme handler. We pass in our root DOM element, we pass in our theme provider, and optionally pass in our Microsoft Teams, which lets us know if we're in Teams or not. Uh, if there is no theme provider service, if you're using it outside of SharePoint Framework, there's uh, also ways to use that without the uh, property. All right, and so then we get started using the components. So I'm going to uh, essentially go through a demo now where I'm going to show how to actually use these components. But let me just point out here on the left hand side that we have uh, grouped our uh, all our co components into different categories. So if you've ever heard me talk about atomic design, this is sort of a methodology to break our components into smaller reusable pieces. So we at the very lowest place have things called atoms. And so showing you something like a button, let's say that we needed a regular button. So we go into here. The button comes in multiple different flavors. So our documentation shows that we have an enum called who button type and that it has all of these different flavors of it. It shows what the different arguments are for that component and then gives you examples of how to implement each different version of that. And if you click on the show code, it's going to give you the code for how to use that and react. And then you can customize it up so that it looks the way you need it to look. All right, enough of all that. Let's go to our demo page. So I have a SharePoint framework solution running. Hopefully it's still running. Uh, let me just double check that everything is good. Let me refresh our page so that we we're sure that everything is going okay. And I have a button right now that has a dog icon on it. So that's all pretty. Let's start back in uh, our project. So here's our Share SharePoint framework. This is a 1.16.1 project. We have imported the uh, H2O React library and I've also included the H2O icons library. Um, this is our SAS file with our quiet dependencies equal true. So we've got both of those things. This is our root components mo uh, SCSS module file. And as I pointed out, I have a root class for our component. And inside of that, I have a global import of the styles. So this gets us all the styles for all the components that are included in the H2O core library. So now that we've imported that, we're good with that in NR web part class. We, you can see I've got the imports for the theme provider, like I already went over. I have the import for the sim set. I have an optional import for that, um, the Fluent UI regular icons. In my on init, I've consumed the theme provider. And then I've initialized my icons passing in that Fluent UI regular icon set. And that allows me, I just want to point out, like if you've built a SharePoint Framework 1.16 project, there's a lot of boilerplate code for theme sport that's included. You don't need any of that anymore. So you can clean it out and you just are left with essentially your on init and your uh, render method. Okay, coming over here quickly, here's our root component. So note that right here in my class name, I am importing that styles uh, H2O React demo root style. That's the thing that adds the CSS variables so that all the H2O controls can be styled properly. And then uh, I have my who button right here with that's an icon type with uh, my dog icon. And the, all that we're doing with the dog icon is giving it the name, which is the ID from the Fluent UI icon that I want to use. And so you can get this either from Chris Kent's Flycon or from that icon tool I just showed you. You, you inspect the element. We do need to improve that, uh, that 
uh, interface so that you can get the IDs on the screen so you don't have to inspect them, but we'll get to that as shortly. So this is how you then add a button. So now if I wanted to add something new, let's say I wanted to add um, something more complicated. So let me come down here. We have organisms, we have cards. Here's the H2O document card. So this is a document card uh, layout that some people like to use, the card layout. And so if we show this code, we can see that essentially it's a root uh, component for the document card, and then it's a bunch of molecules that are the implementation of each one of the pieces of this. So we have the card image, we have the card location, the card title, and then this card footer that includes an avatar and the name of the person and the change date. And so I can essentially just copy all of this, put it in my React component here, I need to change my imports. Come on, come on. Format the document, there we go. And then I need to get all these imports. And sometimes, yeah, there we go. So what I wanna show here is note that the import is coming from the H2O React library, but with a selective import. So there is, so this allows you to be very selective about which components get imported included in your bundle so that you can uh, make sure that your bundle size is as small as possible. So I'm just going to resolve these various imports. So there's image, here's card location, there it is, here's card title, there that is, here's card footer, that's that. And now um, one of the other things I wanna do here is the avatar image size has an enum whom, who avatar size. So I'm gonna do who, oh, typo, who avatar size, there it is. So I wanna include that and then I can do dot 32. So we can, oops, PX 32, there's that. And I think that's the only one I need. All right, let's see. And then if we come over here and we go to our component, let's see if that renders and everything is coming. Is Are we having a build error? Oh, it's just being wicked slow. Yeah, let me try restarting it really quickly because I want to let our next speaker have his time. Come on, come on, come on. There are cache. Oh, no, I got an error. What do I got? Oh, button type is declared, but oh, I should have turned those warnings off. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And where in demoing Arius Lint issues are a problem. <laughs> and come on, come on, come on, build. It should work, but it's not. I don't know why. Uh, Button type is declared, but it's valid. Over, I know I commented it out. Maybe I try starting it again. I don't know. I don't know. Come on. Let me just see. Maybe it's okay. There it is. All right. And so then we have our card in our solution. So obviously you can combine all of these uh, elements in various different ways to make up your own controls. And certainly if you have ideas for controls or you're having problems with one of the controls or um, need any assistance, obviously you can submit issues to our repo, um, which we would happily take and try to assist. I also have some documentation in our solution on contributing. So if you wanted to contribute any controls to our solution, you can check out our contributing documentation. If you have questions or concerns or whatever, or wanna get more help on getting started, please uh, submit an issue to our GitHub repo. And so uh, with that, I will send it back over so our next presenter can take over. Awesome, thanks Julie, great demo. Uh, these things happen, you got there in the end, all good. <laughs> yes. uh,